All right, guys, welcome back to F1 News. The Miami Grand Prix is coming up shortly, but Total Wolf has given his most damning assessment yet of the W14, saying they still have a lack of comprehension as to what makes this car a nasty piece of work. They desperately need the Imola upgrades to work in a couple of weeks' time, because if they don't, they are completely lost, and who even knows if Lewis Hamilton will re-sign a new deal on this evidence. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Here we go then, Miami. It's got to be a good Grand Prix, given the grid we've got. These are the percentage chances of rain during the race, apparently, as it stands. It's Miami, though. It's Florida. Things can change. Things can get interesting. What did happen is overnight, there was a big rainstorm, and, um, like, the rubber on the track has been washed away. So the track is now what we call green again, right, where it's effectively back to how it was on the first day, which, you know, Mercedes are actually quite good at FE1, and as the track rubbered in, they fell further and further off the pace. What this probably means is that anywhere that isn't on the race, line there's probably not going to be any grip out there so we're going to have potentially a bit of a procession but still if Alonso ends up p1 I don't really mind too much of a procession it'll be exciting nonetheless but it does open the door for potential mistakes if someone goes offline no grip you know people could be in the wall today I think it's going to get chaotic and uh, this is another reason as to why so big rainstorm overnight and just as of recording Albert Fabrega says it's raining again so um you know maybe it won't rain during the race maybe it'll be a dry race but already the grid is interesting enough but uh, the idea that it's been raining recently definitely changes conditions and the drivers will have a very different start to the Grand Prix today than they would have experienced yesterday in qualifying. Quick note as well on Charles Leclerc and Ferrari. He gave his thoughts on his crash at the end of qualifying that brought an end to qualifying. And there's been all this debate, right? If you cause a red flag, should your lap time be deleted, right? Because if Leclerc didn't mess up his first lap and uh, will understeer and lock up into the final corner of turn 17, he actually probably would have been P2. I think he lost about seven tenths of a second with that lock up and he would have been P2 otherwise about three tenths off Checo Perez something like that at least and um, still if he'd have binned it in the wall as he did after that he still would have ended up where he did as he did end up P7 so there was still the debate to be had he says look no excuse two days two mistakes same corner not acceptable and it's got to be said as well that the more that Leclerc puts it in the wall or Sainz as well the you know more repair bills Ferrari have to face therefore the less they can spend on upgrades and you know it does affect the team if you crash a little bit too often. And even Helmut Marco twisting the knife a little bit, he says, Max was very unlucky. If we'd have sent him out earlier, he would have certainly been on the first two rows. Sarcastically speaking, we understood that we must not leave the pits behind Charles Leclerc, right? Because basically saying that, oh, well, if you leave the pits after Leclerc, there's a chance that he's going to crash in the session. It's going to be red flagged. So, um, I mean, yeah, that's Helmut Marco at his finest, I suppose. Quick note as well, though, from Ferrari. They are confident that the power unit in the gear Box were undamaged in that collision so they're still hopeful that they can run with the parts from yesterday they might make some precautionary changes just in case but um they're hopeful those parts can at least be okay or at least rescued at the bare minimum from that crash also an update that kevin magnuson was not uh, given any penalty or anything for the supposed impeding of lewis hamilton for the incident that we saw in qualifying one yesterday and it's got to be said alonso was very impressive in quality yesterday only three tenths off checo perez on a scrubbed older set of tyres. If he'd been on a brand new set, they reckon he could have gone even faster. He was already two tenths up on his previous time in the first four corners on his final run before Leclerc put it in the wall and therefore the red flag came out. So that does bode very interestingly well for Aston Martin this weekend. And um, Alonso actually gave a rather optimistic perspective, I think, on when Verstappen will catch him. He's predicted this in the past and says he reckons lap 25, Verstappen is going to be behind him. But, um, you know, if that's the case, that's quite an optimistic approach. I think compared to how they might look in comparison to Red Bull so we'll see how it goes with that visionary Alonso is back on it again and he's obviously made the point as he likes to do that he's going to try and get the lead into turn one we saw what happened in Jeddah right Alonso took the lead into turn one into you know the first part of the race led for a few laps then eventually Perez got back past him and then eventually Verstappen came through and the rest is history Mercedes though an absolute shocker right P6 P13 in terms of even getting through to Q3 it was again touch and go same story last weekend in Baku to be fair right it was a track where they were P10 P11 going into Q3 that time it was Russell that came out this time it was Hamilton that goes out and Hamilton's gonna have to hope for rain or some chaos to make any real progress through the field and look at the numbers right I mean okay Hamilton had a couple of yellow sectors because his tyres weren't warm up the team made the mistake in terms of sending him out too late and we discussed that last night but even Russell who had a you know decent prep lap and everything was okay he was nine tenths off Verstappen eight and a bit tenths 
Charles Leclerc, way behind Alonso, and also behind the Alpine of Ocon, the Alfa Romeo of Bottas, the Haas of Kevin Magnussen. Like, how is Mercedes this far down the pecking order? It's um, it's pretty remarkable, and it looks very similar to Mercedes to how last year's one was, where you really just don't know what you're going to get on a week-by-week -week basis. The scary thing for Mercedes as well is that they said, and Russell mentioned on the radio, that like the car feels okay, the balance is fine. There just isn't the downforce. They just don't have the performance. Now, there's an argument to say they had to raise the right height a little bit because Hamilton was bouncing up and down a bit on the Friday, so they had to make some corrections and that cost them downforce. But I mean, regardless, the Mercedes was nowhere near this weekend's and way further off the pace than I was expecting, especially in qualifying. Race pace might be different, but if it's challenging to overtake, then what does it really matter? So Russell says, look, we're struggling a lot with the balance. It's bouncing around a bit, but even when they got it okay, the performance just wasn't there. And as the tracker rub it in, they just got slower and slower compared to the opposition. So a really challenging weekend for Mercedes. And um, it honestly feels in many ways, they've taken the W13, they've painted it black, they've stopped it bouncing, and it's just the same car in the other aspect, right? And it probably doesn't even have as good a tire degradation as last year's W13 had. So um, Mercedes are honestly at a loss of what's going wrong with their car. And they are absolutely hoping that the upgrades they're bringing in, Miller, whatever they're going to do, help them a fair bit. And I believe even James Allison, there were some rumors that James Allison is not 100% convinced, of course, they're back as their new technical director. He was there before, but now he's back, that the direction they're taking in Imola is absolutely the correct one because there's some rumors that he might potentially be pushing back some of those upgrades a little bit further down the line. Initially, we thought the new side pods were going to come in Imola. The latest update says they're coming in Barcelona instead. So it seems Mercedes want to make absolutely sure with whatever they bring to Imola that it's actually true. And Total Wolf, I mean, the statements he makes here are very damning indeed. And um, these aren't even the most damning of the lot. We'll get to that in a second. We are 12 months on from when we were last in Miami. And, um, you know, the position that they're in is way worse than even he thought it could ever possibly be. The car is only marginally better than last year's. Bouncing on the straights, that's the only thing that's better than last year. The car is not fast enough and we haven't got any comprehension of why that is. Our car is P1, P2 in one session. There are reasons for that. And the next one, your P6, P13 unacceptable. It's not a nice car, not a good car. The performance is really bad. What we're trying to do with the upgrade is create a brand new baseline for us to take the question marks and variables out of the equation and say this is not a problem now that we've come to a different spec, for example, on the front suspension. So, uh, I mean, look, that's what they're going to hope that happens here because they simply can't figure out why this car is so much slower than they thought it would be. Obviously, in the wind tunnel, they saw something that made them believe this zero pod design was going to work. They clearly don't understand these ground effect cars as well as Red Bull do back-to-back -back years now, they've produced worse cars than Red Bull, obviously, and probably Ferrari as well. Whose fault that is? Maybe complacency crept in. Maybe they're just not quite as well equipped for this set of regulations as other teams are. Many questions for it, but, um, you know, they've failed again on their mission to challenge for the championship here. We're also looking into new bodywork solutions that are more conventional than others to create a different airflow. So for me, it's almost like a reset that what we'd have liked to have done 12 months ago to add performance, but at the moment, it's a lack of understanding of the car. And uh, this, I thought, was the most damning quote here that Phil Duncan points out. It is the lack of comprehension of what is wrong that makes this car such a nasty piece of work. The car is not a good car. There are problems everywhere with the base performance of the car and the lack of understanding of the car. It is not acceptable. So uh, the idea that, because it felt like after Bahrain, they knew that something was wrong. But after, you know, Jeddah was okay and then Australia was you know, obviously better than that. They got a P2 in the end with Hamilton and Russell was leading the race through a bit. It was looking very promising for Mercedes. And obviously, that performance is still there, but I mentioned at the time that Australia has never been historically a great track in terms of predicting performance. And now they come to Miami, mess around with the setup, and just have no idea where they are. And obviously, they weren't okay, they were a long way away off Red Bull, right? They're about a second off in quali, but we saw that at times last year. It's just other cars are within, you know, eight tenths of a second, so they don't have the leeway they're used to. And it's now back to back races where they're struggling to get into Q3 and have one car eliminated on both occasions. So they will be hoping that whatever they bring in Imola is a brand new start for this team and that they understand what to change now. Because, you know, a couple of months ago, we saw all the talk from Russell and others that they're making way more progress in the wind tunnel than they ever made during the winter break, which is damning of their progress in the winter break, but fundamentally shows that they should be making big steps here in Imola. But um, now Total Wolf has kind of reined that back a bit and says, well, you know, it's, you know, it's going to be a step forward, but it might not be anything spectacular. And I think they might be concerned that they turn up in Imola and still 
well, the car is somewhat unpredictable and they don't know what to expect. So, um, you know, big statements from Toto Wolff, a damning admission, it's got to be said, on his own technical team, let's be perfectly honest here, in terms of what they've achieved again this season. And the other part of the debate, of course, is that Lewis Hamilton is currently in contract negotiations and it's he's not going to be happy, right? And look, he's made it very clear that he's not going to retire from the sport. He wants to continue and uh, Toto Wolff says we want to give it another shot and, you know, Hamilton's still going to stay around, you would think. But um, if, let's say, the email upgrade arrives and it doesn't really turn the direction of their tide, let's just say... Is he going to be a happy man? Is he going to say, you know what, I've had enough for this. I'm going to Ferrari or something, right? Like, um, I don't think that would happen. But um, still, I guess you can't entirely rule it out, given the way things presently are. So, intrigued to your thoughts and all that in the comment section below. Just one funny thing to mention here, speaking of Hamilton, the other drivers, they are indeed doing a walk-on for, so the drivers in order of their world championship position. So, it starts with with Logan Sargent, Nick DeVries, Magnussen, Albon, and then works his way up to Hamilton, Alonso, Perez, Verstappen, and they all walk out mid it after minute with some sort of walkout theme so you know i'm sure it's going to be comedy and this just for a reminder is the absolutely absurd starting grid for today so if this doesn't produce entertainment i don't know what it's going to very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time